Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Jesus had much to say about vows or oaths or obligations, promises by whatever you mean to call them by. So let's take a look at a few things. Now, in the Day of Atonement, that was a day in the fall, it was, uh, the Jews call it Yom Kippur. It's supposed to be a day of fasting and prayer, a day of reflection upon all the evil that we have done, that we're supposed to put away the evil, ask for repentance, Ask the Lord for forgiveness as we repent of all the evil we did for the prior year. And basically, it's like a spiritual house cleaning for the next year. So, the Jews have what they, uh, their holiest prayer. Holy as an H-O-L-Y. And it's called Kol Nidre. K-O-L-N-I-D-R-E. And I'm going to show you exactly what it means from the Jewish Encyclopedia, the wisdom of the Jews. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 32, Jesus said, But I say unto you that whosoever putteth, shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery. Again ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oath. In other words, you know, it's not a good idea to make a, 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 you know, make swear, make an oath, make a promise, a vow. So, but if you do it unto the Lord, you better keep it. Verse 34, but I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair black, white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these commit, cometh of evil. So in other words, if you say yes, make it yes. And if you say no, then mean no. You know, don't tell somebody yes and when you really mean no, and don't tell somebody no when you really mean yes. So let's take a look at the most holy of Jewish prayers, Kol Nidre, K-O-L-N-I-D-R-E, two words. K-O-L-N-I-D-R-E. Well documented in the Jewish Encyclopedia. Let's take a look. All right, so here we go. At the, uh, Col, uh, they re recite Kol Nidre. They recite Kol Nidre at the, uh, on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. So let's take a look at it. Now remember, these screenshots, they're from the Jewish Encyclopedia. All the Jews get together, and matter of fact, if you look in a newspaper and you live in a Jewish area, you'll see the synagogues and the temples saying, oh, we're going to have a Kol Nidre ceremony. So, and they even sing a little song. So, let's see. Thereupon the cantor chants the Aramaic prayer, beginning with the words Kol Nidre, with its marvelous, plaintive, and touching melody, and gradually increasing in volume from pianissimo to fortissimo, repeats three times the following words. Listen carefully. All vows, obligations, oaths and anathemas, whether called konum, 
Conus, or by any other name which we may vow or swear or pledge, or whereby we may be bound from this day of atonement until the next, whose happy coming we await, we do repent. May they be deemed absolved, forgiven, annulled, and void, and made of no effect. They shall not bind us nor have power over us. The vows shall not be reckoned vows, the obligations shall not be obligatory, nor the oaths be oaths. Remember when you were in elementary school and you made a promise, but you had your fingers behind, fingers crossed behind your back? That's Kol Nidre. Any promises that a Jew makes that has said this, they can break it, not keep a promise, not keep a vow, an oath, and it means nothing to them because they've already promised God in advance that they have no intention of keeping their promises, or their vows, or their oaths. Think about that the next time you go into a, a courtroom and a Jew swears on a stack of Talmuds to tell the truth. Think about that the next time you go to work for a Jew and they promise to pay you for the work, but they don't. All vows, obligations, oaths, and anathemas, whether called conum or conus, or by any other name which we may vow or swear or pledge, or where, whereby we may be bound from this day of atonement until the next, whose happy coming we await, we do repent. May they be deemed absolved, forgiven, annulled, and void, and made of no effect. They shall not bind us nor have power over us. The vows shall not be reckoned vows. The obligations shall not be obligatory nor the oaths be oaths, unquote. Think about that next time a Jew promises you something. You know, Jesus said, let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Yeah, this stuff came out of Babylon. It comes from the Babylonian Talmud. It was around in the days of Jesus. In James chapter 5, verse 2, it talks about the rich. It says, Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped up treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Oh yeah, they were doing this garbage back in the days of Christ. People would work in the fields. They wouldn't pay them. And the cries of those that worked that needed money to feed their families, their, their, their cries are in the ears of the Lord, the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Oh, yeah. In James 5 and verse 10, Take my brethren the prophet who has spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your yea nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. In other words, if you say yes, mean yes. And if you say no, mean no. Yea means yes and nay means no. Yes means yes and no means no. 
but it's not a good idea to swear at all. But just remember something. The vow, the oath, the promise of a Jew who said kol nidre means nothing. Just remember that. And people wonder why, you know, Jews can't understand why they're so hated. It's this kind of stuff. How come Messianic Jews never warn Christians about this stuff? They know all about it, trust me. They came out of Judaism. They claim to be Christians or Messianic Jews or whatever. But they never tell Christians about this stuff. They never tell Christians about the Talmud. They never tell Christians about the Kabbalah. They never tell Christians or warn them about any of this stuff. Why? That's a good question to ask, to ask them. And I've had them lie to my face. Kol Nidre means all vowels. V-O-W-S. It means vow is a promise, an oath. I had a Messianic Jew lie to my face and says, oh, that means all prayers. No, it doesn't mean prayers. It means vows, B-O-W-S, promises. Which is why I have a hard time trusting Messianic Jews. So, all right, well, and this is considered their most holy prayer for the whole year. Really? 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 Jesus said, let your yeas be yeas and your nays be nays. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministry. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. But you know what? Men love darkness more than they love light. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.